Hey, what's going on guys? Reaper here with Reaper's Papa Song Supply. So, I've had several friends and customers ask me over the past few months about uh, dying a very specific set of reproduction jungle fatigues. Uh, I'm not going to mention the name of them, but I think you guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I say cheap and the reason they need to be dyed. Uh, now these, these specific jungle fatigues, again, they're, they're cheap. I mean, they're easily accessible. Uh, they're in the third pattern cut, which is kind of nice to a degree because nobody really reproduces that. But the problem with them is, and that's, well, there's a couple things actually. One of them is the material's entirely too thin. It's, it's like a cheesy thin type of uh, ripstop material. So usually they don't last up very long in the field. At least the pants don't. And that's from my personal experience. Uh, the jackets are great. They're they're a little more accurate. They last a little longer. Of course, you know you're not really dropping down in the dirt a lot with them and stuff like that. Um, they are great. Again, if you want something real cheap that you can have as a field beater for the weekend and pretty much just throw them away after. The other thing is the color. It seems like they come right out of production, like they're supposed to have this real salty look, and they come out more of a bluish green instead of a, a darker OD military green. Now, a lot of guys hate that about the uniforms, at least those two things. Um, the color, I think, is the biggest issue to certain reenactors. They'd like it to have a better, darker, OD original kind of look to it. So, I'm basically going to show you guys how I dye the fatigues when I use them. So, when I use them, like I said, I usually just, I'll take, I'll take the pants and I'll wear them for a, a weekend or a backup pair and I'll thrash them and then they go to material use. That's really all they're good for at that point. I've used a lot of the jackets for different uh, setups and whatnot over the years. Um, again, unfortunately, guys, the color is off, and it's something that's always bugged me, and apparently it bugs a lot of you, too. So this is what you need to do, and, and this is real simple, guys. Um, get yourself a bucket, use the kitchen sink, use the bathtub. It really doesn't matter which one you use. I will say this, however, um, if you want to get a better, consistent, more even dye so you don't get dark spots and light spots throughout the uniform, it's better to use it in a bigger container, such as like the sink or the bathtub, or a bigger uh, pan-style bucket. Um, that way, when you submerge the fatigues into the dye and the water and everything, they're not all crumpled up, and they're easier to stir around and move. That way, all the dye gets into the fabric. So, I pretty much just use a bucket. I don't worry about light spots and dark spots, because like I said, I go through uniforms like nobody's business. Now the amount of water that you put in your container also depends on how much dye you guys plan on using and how many uh, articles of jungle fatigues you plan on dyeing, whether it's the jacket and pants, just pants, just jacket, or multiples. So, Alright guys, now the type of dye I use is very easily acquired. It's pretty common. You get down to your local Wally Mart, you pick it up, you can get it at pretty much any uh, hobby store, uh, and that's RIT dye. Okay. Now, it's important to, to know, it doesn't necessarily have to be this specific two, but this is what I use, and this is how I achieve the proper OD that I like to use for certain fabrics. So, navy blue and a lemon yellow. Okay, now usually when I dye something, guys, I use pretty much the whole container of yellow. Now, you don't have to. Um, you kind of need to be a little bit careful on how much of the blue you use because if you go overboard with the blue then it comes out a really 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 dark color um, so like I said guys I use the whole bottle of yellow that way I can step up the darkness that I want so there again how much blue you use in your mixture all depends on how dark you want the fabric to come out so it's very important to note, use a little bit of blue in your dye mixture and then just kind of start stirring it up. See how dark it is. Maybe throw in a test piece of fabric. Um, since I use the whole bottle of yellow, I would say about half a cap to start of the blue. Um, go ahead and start mixing it up. See how dark it is. Um, there again. It all depends on how dark and or how light you want your OD green mixture to come out. Now this here is still kind of a little yellow, so I'm going to pour a little bit more blue in here. Again, I do this every, every time I dye something, I always test it to see how dark it's going to come out or how light it's going to come out. So don't always use the same shade. 
You guys, like I said, test it. Step up the blue according to the darkness that you want or the shade of OD that you want. Um, that way you kind of know. You don't have to go back through the process because once you get it dyed, it, it's you're kind of there. Um, now, if you throw it in to your container and you're watching it and you're thinking it's going to come out a little darker than what you want, pull it out. Wash it out real good. And... A lot of times that dye doesn't have enough time to actually take to the fabric. So I'm going to say that this is probably about where I want it. Now guys, I don't have a full uniform set, so I'm just using a set of pants I have left from that specific company that makes these reproduction fatigues. So go ahead and get them in there. Now, it's also important to note before you actually dye your fatigues, guys, make sure they're pretty clean, like a fresh wash. That way, anything, any stain-wise stuff or anything that could have got into the fabric or material doesn't throw off the dyeing process. Uh, since I'm using a smaller container, I'm just going to get in here and make sure that every little bit of fabric on these pants are getting soaked. Then, I'll probably leave them out here for about 30 minutes to an hour. Um, usually I like to let them sit longer than 30 minutes. That way it gives the dye proper enough time to get into the material and actually change the coloring. Um, and that way I can also come out here and look and see if it's getting as dark as I would like it. Um, if it's not, I'll we'll step up the dye a little bit more and continue to flip and rotate the uniform itself. Again, this helps with, if you're using a smaller container, to get a more even dye. All right, guys, so there you have it. Now, I'll come back out here shortly and see how it dyes, and once they dry, I'll show you guys what they look like after they're dyed, so that way you kind of got an idea Again, a lot of this is going to be on your part, a little bit of testing to see how light or dark you actually want the fatigues to come out. All right, guys, so uh, it's actually the next day. Uh, I decided to wait until today to do the rest of this video because I wanted to pull the pants out last night and give them a chance to dry so I could see what shade of OD they came out in. Uh, but I also wanted to kind of have daylight to show you the variations of different colors that come out in fatigue. So, so here's three pairs of original jungles. Uh, you got these here which I believe are about 69 dated they're also mostly unissued you can see they're pretty much a darker shade of OD these I believe are 68 69 and they're a little lighter shade after they've kind of faded these I believe might be uh, 67 to 69 as well they're non ripstop you can also see the variation in the fade from them so you get pretty much unissued all the way down to kind of a salty uh, fade in originals now here are the pants I actually dyed last night, and then here's the original color that they were before I put them in the dye. Uh, so side by side comparison, you can kind of see how much different the color is compared to what it originally is, where it's kind of more of a grayish, bluish green, and then you've got an actual darker OD. Now granted, this isn't quite as close to original coloring as I want, so I'm actually going to throw them back into the dye here shortly and step up the dyeing process a little more and get them a darker shade of OD. Uh, now I did that partly for two reasons. I wanted you guys to kind of see if you go a little lighter in the, in, the, in the dye, they'll come out a little bit of a lighter green. Now I have some originals that are actually this green. Uh, so like I said, guys, I'm going to throw these back in the dye one last time and step it up to go a little darker so that way you guys can see the variation. Uh, now what I was kind of talking about last night was, uh, you see there, the discoloration. So that's partly because they were crumpled up and two, they're not 100% clean either. But uh, for what I'm going to use them for, and since they're already tore up, I'm not too worried about it. I just wanted to be able to show you guys the dyeing process and the different color and variations from originals and from the dyeing the reproductions. Since uh, I still had dye left over from dyeing the pants last night, um, I went ahead and just reused the dye that was still in the bucket 
and added a little bit more lemon yellow and of course navy blue to get it a little darker um, since there was still quite a bit of good dye left in the bucket I used only about a quarter of the bottle of lemon yellow and oh I'd say about a, a full cap maybe a little bit more of the navy blue uh, when you're stirring it you can usually tell how dark it's getting um, just by kind of swishing it around so at this point it's probably about as dark as I want to go with it and like I said you can always go a little darker and when you wash it um, it's of course going to lose a little bit of the shade uh, so a lot of times what I do when I dye it and I'll pull it out I'll completely dry it air dry it wring it out um, and let the dye continue to soak in it and then I'll wash them um, you can hand wash it or I recommend throwing it in a washer uh, either either way doesn't matter you just want to kind of make sure you get all of that that excess dye out of it and again if it's still not quite as dark as you want it you can always re-dye it and step up the, the shade of OD uh, with the blue alright guys so I've already run these pants through a second dyeing process I pulled them out let them dry um, now granted they're not quite as dark a green as say like these unissued jungle jackets here which is fine uh, like I said earlier in the video, I did not actually wash these, so they were a little bit dirty. Um, pretty worn out as it was from the beginning. Uh, but you can definitely tell the difference in color between the, the original color and the dyed color. Now, granted, like I said, guys, you can go as dark as you want. I've had some fatigues, and I think I believe I still have a few that are actually this shade of green. Uh, so it's a lot closer to originality and color than how they come out and when you buy them off the shelf. Now also guys, I wasn't too worried about throwing too much dye into these. Uh, they're, like I said, they're pretty worn out and when I wash them and throw them in an actual washing machine, the color is going to change a little bit. Some of this is going to come out and it's, it's going to hit a little bit of a different fade. Uh, so that's kind of what I was looking for. Like I said, guys, these are pretty much ruined. They're tore up. I'm not entirely too worried about actually using them. Um, just step up your dyeing process if you want it darker, if you want it to come out like this. There's a different type of dye you can buy from, say, a Hobby Lobby or something along the lines where you can get an even different olive green. But that uh, Rit dye in navy blue and lemon yellow is... One of your best bets to change up the color, and the more blue you add to the yellow, the darker the OD gets. Now, if you guys would like me to test out different types of dyes or shades of green in the future, let me know, and that's something else I can do later on as well. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it answered many of your questions. However, if you have any other questions, feel free to send me a message or drop a comment below. If you like this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and share. 